Episode 35, The Shape of This Country, where we find out what's stronger than now fire. Get to see the Briggsway, kid. Uh, the Briggsway? What is the Briggsway? Come on, Alchemist. <laughs> Give me a hand. There we go, some camaraderie. Hey, hold on. We can't just... You were this guy's forced intense. to help us under duress. How does that excuse work for you? Horshots! Nice. Good! It's working! Rotate! Turn right! Yes, sir! <laughs> Sir. Yes, it's gone. But where am I? Uh, he's so confused. All he wanted to do is dig a hole. Oh, damn. Amazing. Right, do it now. Ice. Ice? Freeze him. I love how she just took this tank down to the elevator. We're out of ammo. Well, in that case. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Good teamwork. Poor sloth. That fuel is specially blended for the cold. So it's gonna freeze. It will sap his body heat. Nice. It's actually pretty smart. Ice is stronger than fire. Very northern. Well, that takes care of that. You can <laughs> For now. There until spring, monster. Wow. <laughs> so cold. Restraints. This is also necessary. I heard you helped defend the fort from that monster. Thank you. That's a hundred cents. <laughs> <laughs> You're charging me for this? Also, Major Miles is at the hospital. Is he hurt? Hardly. He's there visiting a soldier who was wounded fighting Scar. Scars in the north now? Oh, here they are. <laughs> They're awake. Thanks for yesterday. Yeah, you saved our bodies' lives. <laughs> I'm impressed. You guys stick together. You really right. seem to care. Well, here at I think Briggs, that's the point. we have to look out for each other. You saved our yeah. pals back there, so that makes you our pal as well. Well, you want to let your pal out of here then? No, no we're, we're not, not allowed, allowed to, to do, do that. that. Sorry. It was worth a try, I guess. You can definitely see they have a different mentality about their duties than other people we've seen in the military so far. Some of that seems like the influence of the difficulties of the North, but a big part of it also seems to be Armstrong's leadership. She's out of her mind, but she's an inspiring figure. And they're putting Ed and Al through a lot of crap, but I can't help but wonder if this is all a test, just like with Miles, like he was testing him with his responses to the conversation about the Ishvalids. I feel like this kind of tight-knit group thing, once you're in, you're really in. You're in all the way, and so you have to prove yourself. So you can tell that Ed is gradually going to shift the tides, like these people visited him in prison. He's going to earn their respect, and as I've said, I suspect they're going to be the strongest of allies at some point. Not to mention these guys are so well equipped, right? They have tanks, they have this R&D department. Once they're all on the same page and once they understand Alk history, it's on. Apparently they didn't find any sign of Scar's body at this site. You could always Oh, is he visiting Kimberly? Nearby though. That's true. Interesting. Weird. First a search for a strange black and white cat and a search for Scar. All right. You can leave Scar to us and focus on getting back. Kimberly's here. Hold on a Interesting. I want you and your people to stay out of this. The Ishvalan is mine to hunt down. I hate to tell you this, but the soldiers of Briggs won't let a serial killer roam around free. Here in the north, the law is survival of the fittest. You mentioned that. <laughs> you get careless. Oh! I forgot about this. You tell me what to do again and you'll never leave this hospital. This is throwing me through a loop because they framed it as him visiting someone who was injured in the hospital. It seemed like they were friends, but they're not friends. Clearly. Hello, Kimberly. And how are you recovering? Well, hello, General Raven. You got here quickly. I heard the uh -oh. news and came as fast as I could. I was worried about you. I'll bet you were. Yeah, so the villainous elements are like shifting up north now. I brought a doctor who knows alchemy. And we have the stones as well. You'll be fine in no time. <laughs> I feel like I've seen that guy before, but I can't remember who he is. Was he the doctor there when they made Wrath? I could be wrong about that. Damn, so my nice winter vacation was just shattered by Kimberly and Bradley's elements. I didn't talk about this last time, but one thing I was thinking about later was that I, I really like Miles as a character, right off the bat. He's not as aggressive as some of the other Briggs characters, but he seems fiercely loyal and independent, and he has a really, really interesting backstory, and I like that conversation he had with Ed that showed he was sort of a, a deeper thinker, like an independent thinker. The scene with him and Kimberly is also cool, because he's being professional with them and taking a report and everything, but he's not soft, and I'm guessing he knows Kimberly's legacy. This Dragon Pulse business is especially confusing. It's about the chi of the land. What do you mean by the chi? I'll try 
try to explain. Please Basically, do. it's an energy that exists in all things in this world, like rivers of power flowing through it. Those rivers are far-reaching. They touch everybody and everything. Alchemists don't use the dragon's pulse? They do not. They use energy from the movement of the Earth's crust. A great deal of energy hmm. is created, then released during earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. That's what fuels our alchemy in this country. Really? I don't know. That doesn't seem right. Hmm? I felt that something was out of place ever since I got here. I can tell that there's energy flowing under my feet. But it doesn't feel like it comes from the land's movement. Interesting. What does that it mean? It feels like a crowd of people squirming around. What is it? I don't know what to make of that. It almost makes it seem like the power source that fuels alchemy was created artificially. And maybe that source of power is connected to Father, which would explain why Ed was unable to use alchemy in their confrontation. Are they using some kind of artificial source that's derived from the actual power, but isn't the power itself? So I don't really know what to make of that, but I think it has interesting implications for Ed. Just because they've been attempting to do all these things based on Amestri and alchemy, which now is being implied as incomplete or as something not pure. So him being able to unlock that might have some interesting implications for them trying to get Al's body back. Metal but if anyone alchemist. can do it, it's my boy Edward Elric, and maybe alchemist. Alphonse El Elric. It's huge. A platoon could fit through the hole. Right. That was only part one of the plan, and it wasn't Drachma. I still can't believe that an intruder was able to get this far through our defenses. So has anyone else ever made it into the fort? Sloth before? is not a normal intruder. No, not in all the time I've had command here. But once, nearly twenty years ago, there was a strange incident where the mountain guard was attacked in the middle of winter. Apparently, a mysterious woman stole food and supplies for a full month. <laughs> I survived for a whole month! <laughs> <laughs> nice! <laughs> nice, that's such a cool tie-in. Impressive. I miss teacher. I think there's something you're trying to hide, and you'd risk your lives to protect it. Something or maybe someone. Yep. Nailed it. This time, don't lie to me. I want the truth. I feel like you should do some give and take. Like, how about giving a little first? My feeling about this is that they're trustworthy. The only person I would not want in the room for this conversation is that big guy with the claw arm. He's not very friendly. And he might be a Drachman spy. How do we know he's not? Homunculi. Fuhrer King Bradley. I know, right? It's crazy. A mysterious man called Father. Yep. Corruption in the senior staff. Big time. We've done some joint training with Eastern Command over the years. So I know officers Hawkeye and Havoc. And I'd hate it if we lost either of them. I would like to help them. And, uh, what about Colonel Mustang? Yeah. I couldn't care less about him. <laughs> I'd just as soon see him fall from power. That would eliminate another rival. <coughs> Never mind him. At least she respects him. This is just my guess. But I'd say chances are we'll find it's dug in the shape of an enormous circle. Why? It has to do with alchemy. In our field, a circle is the symbol used to control power. We need to look at this more closely. Lieutenant Fallman, can you list the major events in Amestris that were accompanied by bloodshed? By bloodshed? What are you getting at? First, there's July 1588, in Rivier. Okay. Oh no. Is it going to form a giant circle around the entire continent? Later in 1914, there was the Lior insurrection. There were many casualties. What? An insurrection? But why? I don't understand. I exposed the fake priest in Lior, and I reported it to Eastern Command immediately. Yes, you did. That's but exactly why it happened. Forces came in and ran right. out the troops from the east. Oh no. Damn. Damn, that hurts. And now we just connect the dots. Into a giant circle. How is that possible? It, it looks like the transmission. Wow, it's more than a circle, yeah. Laboratory. Three truths. First, that the ingredients for a Philosopher's Stone are live humans. Second, that there is a group of beings seeking to create an enormous stone. And third, that they plan to use the entire country as a transmutation circle to make it. But even all that doesn't explain everything. Ultimately, yeah. what is their motive? What right. is it they're really trying to do? <sighs> the first Something of the missing. conflicts happened in 1558. Right. It was just after the founding of a mistress. It was the military. They were involved in all of it. <sighs> yeah. So that means not only are they planning to use this country to do whatever it is they're doing, but they actually created it in the first place for that single purpose. My country. You've sworn your life to the state of the dog of the military. 
But do you really know the ones you serve or what their true plans are? You can't expect that. That's a throwback. You have the arrogance to assume you're the one who's in control of it. Don't be a fool! He'll lead us all to ruin! I'm only doing what needs to be done! I do not like this! <laughs> as far as I can tell, there's only one place left. If you're right about your theory, the next place they're going to hit is right here in Briggs. Those bastards in Central. What kind of dirty plans do they have for my fort? I don't know, but it involves a giant tunnel. Damn, this is nuts. I'm like on the edge of my seat. So we knew they were doing this to create Philosopher's Stones, but I didn't realize at what scale they were doing it. But as they said, there is something missing, right? Like, what does a giant stone do, necessarily? They, they must have a bigger goal for it. It was a cool choice flashing back to the first episode, because that villain's purpose was obviously setting up the fact that the military is not what it seems, but you don't realize at what scale it is when you start the show. It's not just that the military has become corrupt and has evil plans or is doing terrible things. The whole country is the evil, or was built for the purpose of that evil. But now, speaking of unity, I mean, if there was any doubt that they're going to become allies against the military, they're literally about to be under attack, probably, by these forces. So that was a well-timed confession by Ed. And this hasn't really been explored yet, I don't think. But one question that's interesting to me is the question of like, what does it mean to be loyal to your country? What does it mean to serve your country? Like we've seen really bad examples of that with the Ishvalan War where people blindly followed orders. But then with that thought, looking at General Armstrong, what is her loyalty to? Because she just found out that the military is responsible for the deaths of civilians and is purposely perpetuating wars. Her first response was to mention her country. And I think it's a cool contrast, you know, like having something be more deeply explored, more firmly rooted in personal values than just blind service. Like when we talk about loyalty to a country, right? Are we talking about loyalty to leadership or to the system? Are we talking about the borders? Are we talking about the people? Or are we talking about principles and values? And we can imagine that some of those choices are deeper than others. Like blind loyalty to the establishment is probably not it. And so it's going to be interesting to me to see how the British soldiers react because we know that they have something deeper than other people we've seen in the military where their loyalty seems to be more about service to each other and maybe to the local people. General, you're needed back at the fort. Yay! Lieutenant General Raven from Central is here to see you. And it they sent their like agents. Already up. Yeah, yeah. Is he going to oversee the attack? Do you think you could con some information out of General Raven? Winry's apple pie. Hmm? That was the first thing I wanted to do when I got my body back. But now, even that much may be out of reach forever. You'll have all the apple pie you could ever want. Good answer. We're going to get our bodies back. And the monsters who have been messing with our country for all this time are going to pay. Just you wait. Hmm. Is it me or does Ed seem to be in a healthier place than usual? They won't tell you anything? Correct. They said they came here to research living transmutation or something. What could be more suspicious? I distrusted them instantly. I had thought about torturing them to get the information, but I am a woman after all. The thought of hurting those boys. Let's just say I couldn't stand it. Now that's rich. She would have tortured you in a second. <laughs> twice about it. <laughs> nice. But General Armstrong, aren't you known as the Northern Wall of Briggs? Walls aren't so soft as that. <laughs> you know, General Raven, at my age, most women are expected to have had a child or two at least. Unfortunately, I'm well past that now. Come now, surely men are lining up to have children with you. Hardly, sir. I hate to say, but like everybody else, I'm growing older. And my body is too. <sighs> that Drogman monster, though. It had an outstanding body. An immortal body. Like something from a dream. Oh, I think I see what she's getting at. What if I told you that very <laughs> What if I told you? It wouldn't be a dream anymore. That was easy. I mean, I guess he has nothing to worry about. Tell me, General. Getting a little close there. Would you there. be interested in a legion of immortal soldiers? He took the bait! Yeah, really easily. It wasn't much bait. Armstrong is an ally confirmed, as if there was ever any doubt. I knew she was an ally from the first time I heard the word Armstrong. <laughs> so this episode escalated the plot waypoint my expectations. Because the last episode ended with a battle with Sloth, and so I thought this episode would be like a battle with Sloth, but that was pretty much wrapped up in the first minute or so. And then we get major revelations about the military and their uh, their wider plan, although we still don't really know totally the ultimate goal. And then we also have agents of Bradley, let's say, showing up. And we know something's about to go down. We know they have a plan for the North because this closes the circle, I guess, the alchemical circle. The coolest part of it is that now we're all on the same page. There's no more Drachman spy stuff, right? That's out of the way. Now we're all on the same team and it feels good to be allied with Armstrong and her men. And then there's this really 
deep and confusing issue of what was Mei Chong talking about with the alchemy? The alchemy in this country is somehow wrong and it's not connected to the dragon or whatever she called it. The alchemy they know seems to be a part of this whole plan, which makes the brothers vulnerable because they're using the tools of their enemy it seems. But that also creates potential for them to unlock whatever's beyond alchemy or whatever the actual pure source is. My gut feeling is that it's all going to be connected, right? Like it's going to be connected to restoring Al's body. It's going to be connected to all is one, one is all and the truth. And it's going to be connected to the resolution to bringing down Bradley, father and the homunculi. I'm sure we're going to actually have a lot more questions raised before we start getting final answers, but it's really exciting. But yeah, as always, we'll just have to wait and see. But that's the end of episode 35. I'll see you guys next time for episode 36. Hey, hey.